Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fumbling at the Goal Line. It's your boy, Dre. Yeah, the world's a little different right now. You know what I'm saying? The world's a little, a little brighter. You know what I'm saying? Walked into work with a little pep in my step today. You know why? Because my Michigan Wolverines beat the Alabama Crimson Tide in the Rose Bowl in the college playoff football uh, semifinal. You know what I'm saying? Like, we on to the national championship game against the Washington Huskies. They defeated uh, Texas last night in the Sugar Bowl. So, it all comes down to one final game uh, next Monday. And, um, yeah, we're going to see if we can bring it home, bring a national championship home for the first time since 1997 uh, after, you know, my Wolverines beat Washington State in the Rose Bowl. Um, back in 97 that was back when voters had to decide on who the hell you know the national champion was back in the day you either had a split national champion or you just had like a unanimous national champion but uh, you know that's why I'm glad these playoffs is going on right now to determine you know what I'm saying like the, the the winner is determined on the field and you know there's controversy who gets in there but once you know, teams get in there, it's settled on the field. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, like it, it was a, it was a tumultuous, uh, hard game. <laughs> it was a hard game uh, to watch at times, just because, like, pretty much, um, I think Michigan should have won by more. It was just like you know, special teams was definitely shooting Michigan in the foot. You know, uh, Samaj Morgan earlier in the game, he had a muff punt, uh, muff punt return that, you know, Alabama jumped on and then they went and scored a touchdown. We could have easily went up like 14 to 14 to nothing. Um, defense uh, total, I, I believe, like in the game had like like six or seven sacks on uh, Jalen Milrow. Now, don't get me wrong, like, Jelly Milrow, like, he was doing his damn thing. Like, that boy had me concerned. <laughs> he definitely had me concerned. Like, because in the second half, like, you know, that that RPO that he was running, um, it, it looked like we we couldn't stop that shit. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, he um, actually, like, McC- uh, McClellan for Alabama, he had 14 carries for 87 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Mel- Melro, like I could live with if he beat us, you know, with his arm. But uh, yeah, he was he was he was getting us with his legs, man. He was getting us with his legs. Um, he had like 63 yards on 21 carries. Um, like pretty much like our DBs like locked up the Alabama wide receivers. Isaiah Bond had four receive uh, four receptions for 47 yards. Uh, Jermaine Burton, who was like their best receiver, he had four catches for 21 yards. Uh, that Will Johnson uh, Island is uh, that shit real? <laughs> that shit is real, dog. Um, Mikey Sanderstrill, uh, Sanderstrill um, he was doing his thing back in the, in the secondary as well. Our defensive line came to play, like our defensive line and, and the linebackers came to play. Um, let's see. Looking at what JJ McCarthy did. Uh, he was 17 for 27, 221 yards, uh, three touchdowns. Uh, Blake Corum had a solid game against the Alabama defense, uh, 19 carries for 83 yards, um, one touchdown. Roman Wilson, he finally got he got it going like in the in the last drive when we really needed him. Cause I was like, yo, like my man Roman Wilson, like he ain't really doing shit. But uh, yeah, he uh, he scored the. He scored the game tying touchdown. Um, he had four receptions for 73 yards. Tyler Morris had two receptions for 45 yards. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Tyler Morris, Roman Wilson, and Blake Corum all had uh, receiving touchdowns. Blake Corum also had a uh, rushing touchdown, and that was turned out to be the game winning touchdown the, in overtime. And <coughs> pretty much like. No, it's like our, it felt like our defense had the game in control for most of the game. The third quarter is when Alabama 
started to make their move, but it was just like it felt like the def- uh, our offense like just kept stalling for the majority of the game. And I'm like, yo, if we can get this shit in gear, like we should be able to take control of this game. Uh, and I was concerned when you know, but well, one when Alabama took the uh, the 17 17 13 lead, and then when they uh, we held them to a field goal, then they. It was like 20 to 13. So I'm like, all right. We just like four and a half um, minutes left. I'm like, yo, we we definitely got to do something. Like, it's do or die time right now. It's do or die time. And J.J. McCarthy was able to lead us down the field, um, tie the game up with, uh, I think it was like a minute and a half left. And defense was uh, able to, you know, um, hold Alabama, uh, the punt returner. They replaced uh, Samaj Morgan um, with, I don't even know who the hell the, the punt returner was um, for the, like the last punt in the field, but he muffed the punt and he was like a half yard away from being like, you know, tackled in the end zone for safety. I was like, oh my God. So at that particular point in time, I'm like, yo, we just take the, just take the knee we going into overtime. <laughs> we went to overtime. Alabama won the toss. They chose to defer. You know, rest is history. Blake Corum um, had that that that, uh, that fucking run where he would not be stopped. He would not be denied. We scored a touchdown, and yeah, pretty much uh, we shut down uh, Alabama. I think it was at like the four yard line. Um, and that, that was all she wrote. 27-20 uh, was the final in overtime. And we move on. And we play Washington. Now, the Washington-Texas game, like, I can already tell, like, that was going to be a back and forth just because, like, both teams, like, their defenses aren't really that uh, that strong. Like, their offense is potent. Both offenses are potent. But it was just, like, who – would stall out first that's the person that's going to be like you know pretty much like who, well whoever scores first and like they just keep scoring that was the team that was going to win and then uh that was Washington Washington scored first Texas was playing catch up you know um all game because like they would answer a score but it's like they really couldn't get that key stop and then capitalize on that key stop to take the uh to take the lead so it was like there was some drama at the end where, you know, uh, they uh, Texas needed to stop. They got the stop, but it's like the Washington running back, he got hurt. So they had to, instead of like letting the time roll down to about 15 seconds where they got a punt, uh, the clock stopped um, to get Dylan Johnson off of the field. So, you know, Texas marched down the field. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know, Texas could actually come back and actually get their first lead of the game and actually win this motherfucker, <laughs> like, with no time on the clock. Like, you know what I'm saying? But uh, their DB, um, he did. He he had a hell of a hell of a uh, pass uh, defense against, uh, you know, their I guess, like their tallest receiver. Um, he's like six four. Um, whoever, like Jackson is on uh, Washington. And he uh, he pretty much like he he saved the day for them. So it's going to be interesting uh, the contrasting styles uh, with Washington um, and Michigan because Michigan is like you know we want to pound a rock and you know control time of possession. Washington will let that thing fly. So as a defense, definitely got to get pressure on Michael Penix because like if any other quarterback. Just like any quarterback, you put enough pressure on him and get him off his spot and make it uncomfortable for him, like, he's not going to sit there and pick you apart. But it's like you definitely got to put pressure and try to confuse Penix. Like, we're familiar with Penix because he went to uh, he went to Indiana for, I think, like three or four years. So it's like we're, uh, we're familiar with Penix. And he went to uh, Washington for, like, the last two years where he's uh, actually been healthy because he's had about like three or four season ending surgeries 
uh, when he was at um, when he was at Indiana. So pretty much like uh, Michigan's defense is going to have their hands full, you know, because uh, they have three three really good quality um, wide receivers. They got Rome uh, Zoom. I can never pronounce my man's name. Um, as a matter of fact, let me let me see if I can find the correct pronunciation. It's Rome Azune. I think that's what his name is. Um, who else they have? They have Giles Jackson, who ironically was a Michigan Wolverine for like two years. And he uh, ended up transferring out to uh, Washington. And who is their third receiver? I'm trying to see who their third receiver is real quick. Um, let's see. Box score real quick. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, Rome Adunze, a uh, Jalen Polk, and who is their third receiver? I think like Giles Jackson, uh, Jalen McMillan. You know, they're, they're all they're all good. They get they got like they they got like three or four receivers that's really good. Um, so pretty much yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge for Michigan's defense like to slow down this offense me personally I didn't think that we were going to go up against uh, Michael Penix this year um, just because you know Washington is uh, coming to the Big Ten next year uh, was it Washington, Oregon, USC and U, uh, UCLA are coming to the Big Ten so really <laughs> even though it's like the last year of the Pac-12 um, and quote unquote like you know technically Washington is a Pac-12 representative in this game, uh, but they're coming to the Big Ten next year, so it's like an All Big Ten uh, national championship game. So, <laughs> like at least we didn't get no All SEC uh, championship game like that that we had for like the past couple years, and there is no SE, uh, SEC participant in the uh, national championship game this year. So, there's been some parity this year, uh, Georgia really wasn't as strong as they've been for the past two years Alabama um they're you know they're good but they haven't been as dominant as they have been in the past two years uh Texas is actually you know on the rise but Texas is going to the SEC uh, along with Oklahoma next year so uh it's gonna be uh, th- th- this year is like the last year for I guess like the normal um you know conferences that that you know the it's a transition of the old guard really because you know the Pac-12 is pretty much it's gone as you know it they're going to rebuild the Pac-12 I don't know how it's going to look I just know um pretty much like Washington State and uh Oregon State are the only two teams in the original Pac-12 that's left so they're going to I guess rebuild it within the next couple years right now Arizona State no uh, right now Oregon State and um, Oregon State and I just said the motherfuckers names uh, Washington State will be playing I think with the Midwest Conference one of those conferences um, they're they're going to be playing like games with them until they can figure out this Pac-12 situation but yeah, like I, I'm just excited. Michigan's back in the national championship game. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, man. It's been a long fucking time coming. Jim Harbaugh has finally got us back to where we uh, where we need to be at. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, the big the Big Ten moving forward is you know like I said they're adding four teams from the Pac-12. It's going to be a super conference. So the two super conferences. Right now, the Big Ten and the SEC, because the SEC was already strong, then they added Oklahoma, and they added Texas. So, I don't really see, like, I mean, you got you to be a really, really great super team um, to go undefeated, really, like, in the, in the Big Ten. Um, that, that'll just be my opinion until I see, like, someone actually do that, and... I don't know if the Ohio State. I mean, I, it's still going to know. It's still going to 
you know, mean, uh, you know, a lot to both schools in this rivalry. But as far as like, you know, winner wins the Big Ten, uh, depending on where these, you know, Pac-12 schools are going to be placed in the Big Twen- uh, in the Big Ten, like which division that they're going to, well, yeah, which division that they're going to be placed in. Uh, that will determine, you know, it's, it's not going to be a foregone conclusion, like, who's going to win the Big Ten, either Michigan or Ohio State. Like, you know, you got four quality teams that's going to be added in. Well, UCLA, uh, they might not be as good, but, you know, USC, Washington, and Oregon are known to be, you know, perennial powerhouses. So let's see how this shit works. But, yes, Michigan is back. Hell to the victors for at least uh, this weekend. And hopefully I'll be saying hell to the victors after next Monday. <laughs> yes, let's go, baby. Go blue. All right, so let's transition over to NFL news real quick. The NFL playoffs are pretty much two weeks away. Uh, this upcoming weekend is the season finale, well, the regular season finale. And in the AFC, there are three spots available in, on the AFC side. So right now, the teams that are pretty much in the playoffs on the AFC side is the Baltimore Ravens. They locked up the number one spot. Uh, the Dolphins with the number two spot. Uh, the Chiefs with the third spot and the Cleveland Browns are at the fifth spot because they won the uh, the, uh, the AFC North. Uh, the Chiefs won the AFC West. Uh, the Dolphins are currently in first place um, in the AFC East. This game with Buffalo is a winner take all. So, you know, um, pretty much like both teams are playing the starters. Uh, Baltimore locked up the AFC North. So that's why the Cleveland Browns got the fifth spot. And uh, they're at 13-3. to So pretty much uh, Baltimore, you know, is going to sit Lamar Jackson at least. And I don't know what they're, what they're going to do with the other regular starters. But you know Lamar Jackson ain't playing in this, in this last week. Um, this will be the first time in a minute. In a few years that he he'll be actually um, playing in the playoffs because or like playing in the playoffs, um, you know, somewhat healthy because he hasn't been healthy uh, for like the past couple years, and he didn't even play in the playoffs last year because he was hurt. Uh, so the teams that are still in the hunt right now are the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, if they win, they're guaranteed in. If they lose playoff probability drops down to 22 percent right now they're currently 73 percent um chance to make the playoffs the bills are currently 85 percent chance to make the playoffs if they lose 64 percent chance and if they win if they beat the dolphins 99 percent they're in because they would have won the afc east now the colts are holding down the seventh spot right now so if they lose they're fucked because <laughs> they have a less than one percent chance if they lose. If they win, uh, they play Houston, so Houston can play spoiler. Um, they're in, and currently they're at forty-six percent right now. On the bubble is those same Houston Texans that the Colts play. Uh, they're you know ninety-nine percent chance uh, getting in. They're pretty much guaranteed. So the winner between. Um, Yo, Indianapolis and Texas, uh, Texas and Houston, they pretty much win the AFC South. So that's why, you know, it's a guaranteed playoff spot. Um, the Steelers are on the bubble as well. They got a 14% chance if they lose, a 63% chance if they win because they need help. And so right now they're at currently 44% chance to make the playoffs. And we'll just run down all the people who have been eliminated from playoff contention right now. Be the New England Patriots, the Los Angeles Chargers, the Tennessee Titans, the New York Jets, the uh, Le- almost the Oakland Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Denver Broncos. All out of the playoff picture. And we go on the NFC side. 
you know, the uh, San Francisco 49ers locked up the top seed in the uh, on the NFC side. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be like uh, a lot of uh, starters getting rested over there. Um, let's see. You know what? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even if they lose and Dallas wins, like pretty much like they'll still have the number one seed because they beat the shit out of Dallas earlier this year. Dallas Cowboys are the two seed. The uh, Detroit Lions are the third seed because they lost to the Lions. I mean, they lost to the Cowboys um, like last week. Uh, the Eagles are in the fifth seed because we're in second place right now in the NFC East. Uh, we got to win out and ho- um, hope that, I guess, like the Cowboys lose to the Commanders. Um, and the Los Angeles Rams have clinched the playoff spot uh, on the NFC side. <coughs> Sorry, I'm uh, currently um, battling like a head cold <laughs> or something, so... Yeah, I'm congested like a motherfucker. But anyway, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are still in the hunt. Um, They can win the NFC South uh, with a win. And the Green Bay Packers would actually get a playoff spot if they actually just win. All they got to do is beat the Bears. Hopefully they um, they don't fuck up like they did last year. I believe, like, they could have made the playoffs, like, uh, in week 18 and the Lions beat them and made the playoffs so currently on the bubble still well with a chance to get in is the Seattle Seahawks they have a 44% chance <clears throat> to make the playoffs if they win the New Orleans Saints um, they have a 51% chance if they win so both teams need help and the Minnesota Vikings they have a yeah they need all the help that they need um they got to beat Detroit, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty much a wrap for them. Um, and the Atlanta Falcons, they have a 36% chance. So yeah, they need mad help. And at one point the Falcons had, uh, control of the NF, uh, the NFC South and they just like fucked it off. It was like, yo, fuck that. We don't, we don't want to make the playoffs. Like this, let's just give it to the Bucks. <laughs> let, let the Bucks have a playoff spot. You know what I'm saying? So The teams that are eliminated on the NFC side are the uh, Carolina Panthers. Uh, They have the worst record in the league, I believe, at 2-14. The Arizona Cardinals, the Washington Commanders, the New York Giants, and the Chicago Bears. All out of the playoff pitcher because they all fucking suck. Um... (laughs) So, pretty much, like, yeah, Lamar Jackson is, uh, he's sitting out. Like they're Baltimore is going to rest them. They're not taking any chances to play him. Um, you know, pretty much like the last uh, game of the season. Uh, let's see. Zach Wilson is actually out. He's ruled out for the season finale for the New York Jets. So that might actually be the end of his Jets career. I, I don't imagine that they would bring him back, especially after they brought in Aaron Rodgers. And if, Rodgers is good to go uh, next season. He's definitely starting. Um, coming back from his Achilles injury. But uh, they're going to still need to draft a quarterback of the future for the Jets. Because you might get Aaron Rodgers for like maybe like next year and the year after that. And then because um, the nigga is like 40 something years old or he's like almost 40. So he's not going to be playing forever. Um, let's see. So AJ Brown, he insists that he's not mad at Eagles coach Nick Seriani. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell is going on with uh, AJ Brown. People are speculating that he's got a problem with the coaching staff, like the what well, offensive coaching staff, because you know, I, I think he has a problem probably with Brian Johnson because Brian Johnson is calling the plays on the offensive side. He's the offensive coordinator and. The play calling has been, like, really, really ass. Um, I, I don't know. Like, the Eagles can't really figure out, like, their identity. Like, it, we're, we're at the end of the regular season, and they still haven't figured out what their, what their identity is. It's clearly to run the fucking ball. Like, my man, um, uh, DeAndre Swift, like, he 
has made the most um, of his like carries that he got this year. You know what I'm saying? Because like he doesn't have like a lot of carries. Um, let's see. I'm looking at his stats right now. So for the actual whole regular season, like he has 229 carries, still managed to get 1,049 yards, averaged almost five yards a, a per rush, and he has five rushing touchdowns. And he has 39 receptions out of the backfield. So, yeah, pretty much like statistically, this is DeAndre Swift's best uh, year in the NFL. Like, um, he had 114 um, attempts with Detroit his rookie season. He had 521 yards. Uh, second season, he had 151 carries, uh, 617 yards. And 2022, he had uh, 99 carries for 542 yards. I think he got hurt in, like, all those seasons. So this is, like, his really his first healthy season in the NFL. And he's – he's when we give him the ball, like, he does what he's supposed to do. But it's, like, the thing is, like – why aren't you giving this motherfucker the ball? Like, I don't understand this shit. Like, I understand you pay Jalen Hurts, like, mad fucking bread. But it's like, you gotta, we have, like, one of the best offensive lines in the in the NFL. Like, let them do what they do. Let them clear some space so we can run the ball. Then you can run, like, your RPOs and stuff like that. And it helps to play, uh, it helps the, you know, the passing attack as well, because then we can hit people with fucking play action passes over the top, things of that nature, so it's like, it, it makes sense in theory, but it's like Brian Johnson's like, yo, fuck that, we just gonna run, like, fucking double moves and shit, like, you know what I'm saying, like, routes that take a while to fucking, uh, develop, and... You need about like maybe five seconds. The average pocket lasts probably around like two or three seconds in the in, in uh in the league. So yeah, it's not going to be very successful. <laughs> it's what I'm pretty much saying. So like our fucking passing attack has been like you know it, it when it works it's it looks great. But other than that, like when your players are getting frustrated and it's like yo like we need to get the ball out faster. Like, run some slants, stop running these stupid-ass bubble screens and shit like that. Like, listen to your fucking players. Your players are the ones who are executing the plays. If they're telling you that these plays don't fucking work, why the fuck would you keep calling these shits? But I can see why A.J. Brown would be frustrated. But he says that he's not frustrated with Eric, uh, with Nick Sariani. So I'll take his, I'll take his word as a, uh, you know, grain of salt or whatever but Eagles need to get back to winning some football games so uh, as we approach pretty much like the uh, end of the season Christian McCaffrey all but has like the rushing title locked up really like Kyron Williams would have to go crazy because my man is like a full 335 yards behind Christian McCaffrey so Christian McCaffrey has 1,459 yards. Kyron Williams has 1,100, uh, well, 1,144 yards. James Cook has 100, no, I said 100, 1,086 yards. DeAndre Swift, top five running back, and he has, like, less carries. Um, actually, Christian McCaffrey has, like, 272 carries, and he was hurt for, like, maybe one or two games. Uh, Kyron Williams, 228 rushing attempts. Uh, DeAndre Swift has 229 attempts. James Cook has 224. But back to the rushing yards. Um, Derrick Henry cracked 1,000 yards again. He has 1,014 uh, yards. Raheem, Raheem Mostert, 1,012 so those are pretty much like your thousand yard rushers. David Montgomery has a chance. He's just twenty five yards away from rushing four thousand yards. Uh, Travis Etienne needs about forty nine yards to hit a thousand. Bijan Robinson needs about I want to say fifty three yards. He's at like nine forty nine forty eight. That's quick math. 
Um, you know what? I think it's like 52. 52 yards. But get 53 just to make it, <laughs> just to be sure. Um, so pretty much, like, yeah, he, he, he has a chance to hit 1,000 yards. So uh, it's a lot of receiving going on right now because, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, barely some thousand, there's about like four or 5,000 yard rushers right now. So you can tell, like, you know, definitely where the league is going over the past few years. Uh, CD Lamb leads all receivers with 122 receptions. Tyreek Hill has 112. Amon, Amon, Amon Ra St. Brown has 112. Keenan Allen, 108. AJ Brown, 105. Evan Ingram is actually having the best um, season in his career over in Jacksonville. He has 104 receptions. Michael Pittman, 104. Puka Nakua has 101. So I think he actually leads the Rams in receptions. Yes, he does. Uh, Adam Thielen. Oh, shit. My man actually got 101. I thought this nigga was washed, but um, he has 101 catches. Uh, he has 1,000 yards. 1,002 yards. I believe four touchdowns. Yeah, four touchdowns. I thought he was, like, washed. He might still be actually be all right. Uh, his former... Uh, teammate Stefan Diggs has 100 catches and he has uh, 1,096 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Adams, 98 receptions and he has 1,098 yards, seven touchdowns. Jamar Chase, despite being out like multiple games, still has 96 catches. TJ Hawkinson, 95 catches. Travis Kelsey, um, I guess like having a down year with his, you know, his standards, uh, 93 receptions, uh, 984 yards and five touchdowns. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much like your top 10 wide receivers or receivers out there. Um, so pretty much, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much the NFL right now. So we're just waiting for the playoffs to start. And just gave you like a little recap of like some stats that's going on um, for like the year. But other than that, that's the NFL report for right now. All right, so the NBA season is actually almost uh, to the midway point. Um, I believe the All-Star game is either later this month or next month. Uh, let me see when the All-Star game is. Actually, like, the All-Star voting uh, actually starts now. So, pretty much, um, we're going to see who makes the All-Star team. But, let's see who's on the ballot. Um, so, for the West. Huh, are they going back to the West? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going back to East-West now. Um. So, Luka Doncic, um, SGA, I I think it's like Shy, Shy, uh, Gilders, Alexander, um, De'Aaron Fox, Steph Curry, Anthony Simons, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Kyrie Irving, CJ McCollum, uh, Jamal Murray, uh, Devin Vassell, James Harden. Uh, Jalen Green, Tim Hardaway Jr., Clay Thompson. Hold on, this is like every fucking guard in the West. Okay, so they're <laughs> they're all on the fucking ballot, <laughs> like for the West. Uh, so I guess like so every fucking you know what you would call it. Uh, every player is on the on the ballot because I'm not going through like all these motherfucking players because that, that's a lot. Um, so right now the key of rookie ladder. Uh, Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembenyama are actually leading, um, I guess, like, you know, the the ballot for, I guess, like, the, uh, the rookies versus, um, I guess, like, the rookies versus, like, the, I don't know, the fucking vets or whatever that they be playing. I don't know. But, uh, pretty much, like, so the, the MVP... Not MVP, the rookie rookie of the year rankings right now. It looks like Chet Holmgren's in the lead. Right now he's averaging 16 
about basically like 17 and a half uh, points per game, uh, 7.6 rebounds, 2.7 blocks per game. So uh, last week he was number one. Victor Wembanyama, he's averaging 18 and uh, 18.9, uh, 10.2 uh, rebounds per game, and three blocks per game. I don't understand like how the fuck he's uh, trailing behind Chet Holmgren when he's got better numbers. But, you know, I guess, like, Chet's part of uh, a team that is having success. And I believe, like, they're, like, the number one seed. Either the number one or the number two seed right now in the West. Uh, Jaime ha- uh, ha- Jaquez Jr., I think that's what his name is. Uh, with the Heat, he's number three in the rookie race. Uh, he's averaging 13.7 points per game, uh, 3.9 rebounds, and 2.6 assists per game. Number four is Brandon Miller, uh, who was actually like the number two pick in the draft. Um, he, people thought he should have been number one, but I guess like after his NCAA tournament showing or lack thereof, um, and then Victor Wembanyama like you know gained the steam. Victor went first. Brandon Miller went second. Um, he's number four on the Rookie of the Year list right now. He's averaging about 15 points a game. Uh, 3.8 rebounds per game and 2.2 assists per game. Derek Lively, uh, the second for Dallas Mavericks. He's coming in at number five. He's averaging nine points a game, 7.7 rebounds per game, and one and a half blocks per game. Uh, the next five is Brandon Podzimski. Um, he's a rookie with the Warriors. Keontae George is number seven. Uh, uh, Scoot Henderson, he's actually um, having a decent year. Uh, he, his rookie year started off slow, but he's uh, out here averaging 12.4 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, and almost five assists a game. Um, he's pretty much like the heir apparent to, you know, I guess like replace uh, Portland as the franchise, but well, replace Dame Lillard as Portland's franchise player. Uh, Asar Thompson. Uh, number 10, no, number 9 for the Detroit Pistons, and then uh, I can't even pronounce this man's name. It's Tumani, I think Kamara, uh, for the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, rounding out the Rookie of the Year candidacy uh, at number 10. So, uh, let's see who plays today. Today, uh, the Bucks play the Pacers today, uh, the Wizards and the Cavs. Uh, Thunder and the Hawks play. Uh, the Pelicans and the Timberwolves play. Uh, the Raptors and the Grizzlies. Nets and the Rockets. Trailblazers and the Mavericks. The Bulls and the Knicks. The Pistons. God damn, these niggas is 3-30. and 30. Uh, Versus the Utah Jazz. Uh, the LA Clippers versus the Phoenix Suns. Uh, the Orlando Magic, who just came off of a loss over in... Uh, against Golden State last night. Uh, they played the Sacramento Kings, so I guess they're on their, their West Coast road trip. And the Miami Heat played the Los Angeles Lakers tonight. So, those are your games for tonight. And, look at that for the fucking scores from yesterday. Anyway. Um, Alright, so, your point leaders right now is uh, Joel Embiid. God damn, yo, I know my man's having a monster season, but he's averaging almost 35 a game. He's averaging 34.8 points a game. Uh, Luka Doncic is at number two at 33.4 points a game. Uh, Shai Gildress Alexander uh, is at 31.4. Giannis Antetokounmpo is at 30.9. And De'Aaron Fox is at 30 points a game. Yo, like, when you was averaging, like, 32 like back in the day like that that was doing something but like now you got five niggas averaging 30 like this is almost like the the halfway point of the season you can tell like the rule changes and like the quicker uh paces of the game and pretty much like you know no hand checking you basically can't touch a nigga nowadays and uh <laughs> the the amount of threes that motherfuckers be putting up, like, yo, people's averaging, like, top five niggas is averaging, like, at least 30. That's wild. 
DeMontis Sabonis is averaging uh, 12.12.5 rebounds per game. But Anthony Davis with 12.3. Nick, uh, Nikola Jokic is averaging 12.3. Rudy Gobert with 12.1. And then Joel Embiid with 11.8. So my man's giving you 34.8. Like 35. He's basically giving you 35 and 12. Like, you know what I'm saying? On a nightly basis. Um, that, that was the top five rebounders. Assist men is Tyrese Halliburton. He has, uh, you know, my man is dishing the rock right now. He's out here dishing with like leading the league with 12.7 assists per game. Uh, Trey Young has uh, 11.3. Luka Doncic, he's averaging like almost nine and a half. Nikola Jokic is averaging like nine. Fred Van Vliet is averaging eight and a half. Uh, blocks per game, Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama. I'm, I'm gonna stop fucking uh, his middle name up. I mean his last name up. Uh, him and Brooke Lopez basically got the league lead at three. Walker Kessler and Chet Holmgren are tied for I guess second for they got 2.7. Anthony Davis is rounding it off with uh, 2.6. So. Man, that's pretty much the uh, NBA news for right now. But uh, yeah, we, we're almost at the uh, at the halfway point, so the season's just heating up.